Hey everybody, it's Carla. Welcome to the Happy Bookmaker. So I hope you're doing great. It's a wonderful fall day here. Really cold last night. It got down to freezing for the first time. So uh, winter is on the way. So we're going to work on an art journal layout today. It's been a little while since we've done that. I've been busy making other kinds of books. So um, we're going to call this layout Louisa's secret garden and I will explain why we're going to call it that um, in a little bit here. So let me just kind of show you what we've been working on. If you haven't seen any of the art journal layout videos, um, I do have a playlist for that. So um, they are made in, um, we are constructing this in a children's, um, what is this called? You know, one of those hardcover books and um, it's all done except for this one layout that we're gonna do and then the cover. So what we're gonna do is I'm starting with this image and her name is, this is what she was cut out from. And I will show you the book at some point here. I've used this book in a lot of um, uh, junk journal layouts and you know for images and art journal layouts. But she is Louisa uh, Grayfin. Aylesford. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but um, the reason I picked her is she's kind of got this far away look, like she's thinking about something, she's dreaming about something, um, and just just that look on her face, and the fact that I wanted to um, introduce flowers into this layout made me think of sort of a secret garden kind of a layout. So she is going to be the star of the show. And I also, of course, have to have some kind of bird, and this is what I ended up with. And it is kind of big, but it's okay because we are gonna be painting, doing some painting over it, and I'll explain that as well. And then I have a lot of these botanical images from um, uh, Macmillan Book of Wildflowers, and um, you know, I have botanical books that I get these beautiful images in. We're gonna be using that. Now this is one of my own um, pieces of artwork uh, that I copied onto the, a, a book page from the book that um, Louisa came from. So, and I did several of those and I'm gonna kind of show you those. I think they're really cool. And I think I'd like to do some prints of those and frame them. I think they'd be really, really interesting and unique. So I do need to, um, I, wanted, I decided to tear the sides so that it's not so straight. Um, but um, this is my um, from my sketchbook flower series and it is yellow tulips and then on uh, also for the background so this will be part of the background it will be in the middle it'll be another kind of star of the show and then this is going to be on one end and this just some music paper um, just to add a little interest to the background now these are other images that I thought about using um, you know when you're when you're planning out an art journal layout you know, I, I don't just go right to the thing. I look at many, many images and um, kind of put together in my mind how I think I want it to look. This was one of the birds that I thought about using as well as this one, um, uh, this moon shell. I thought about using that. Here are a couple more of my sketchbook flowers images. So I, I liked these. Now the reason I didn't use the pink because that was my initial one is because then I found this and I didn't want to use you know have these pink flowers and then my pink roses um, I want to have a lot of different colors so um, and I do love the hydrangeas but um, you'll see what we picked here and then I like this little lady and she's already kind of in a garden isn't she really really pretty but I, I love the black and white I love that I'm introducing a neutral element in her this was an image that I thought about adding um, I don't think I'm going to I, I really love it but I think I'm gonna be doing some hand painting in the book um, as well as, as the other things that we've already chosen and these are just some other images that I thought about incorporating pieces of I love her I think I've talked about her before. Um, she looks like Wonder Woman to me. <laughs> like, does she not look like Wonder Woman? Like, you know, an old version? It's the same kind of look, right? Um, and then there's Lady Hamilton, 
which I think that she is so pretty too. But we are gonna stick with the ones that we picked. So um, let me get organized here and we'll get started. Okay, so the way we're gonna lay this out is we're gonna lay down some music paper and, um, and then a little piece here because this is not going to cover this entire section. We're gonna put the birdie over here. I love music paper. I, ju I just love the, um, I love the movement of it. And uh, again, and I love that it's black and white. Now this is the artwork that I'm going to rip the edge at least as far as it can be seen. So I've already kind of cut this to the angle that I want it to be. And so we are gonna be going over the seam you can see like this, but that's okay because that seemed to work out the best actually in this book. Take this big flower image and um, we're gonna put this over here. And Louisa is going to be just kind of over here, like towards the end. She was like, um, her arm was on like a stone block of some kind, um, but I didn't, I really just didn't want that in the drawing. So she's just like, She's just gonna be like this, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. So, um, so it's gonna be something like this, and then we're going to, um, after this is all glued down, we're gonna go over the top of this with uh, clear gesso, and I got this recipe from Book and Paper Arts, and I will, uh, I will try to find that video and link it in the description box. Now it doesn't look clear now; it's white because it's made of from PVA and water, and. Uh, remember if there's something else in it now it's been so long since I made it but um, that's gonna go over the top of this so that I can then paint on top of this so it's almost gonna be like uh, kind of like a Mod Podge seal um, but it's gesso clear and then I'm gonna do I'm thinking about doing maybe some lavender and daisies down in here um, considering a little blue sky painting up in here and I would like to bring out this tree. I'd like to kind of fake like a couple of branches or a branch coming out and then uh, a few leaves. So it's kind of like going over this whole area, if that makes sense. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take um, some tacky glue, which is PVA, and I'm going to glue all of the images down to this board with the tacky glue. Okay, so I have my tacky glue. Um, I did water it down a little bit. It get, tends to get a little a little dry, a little thick, a little sticky. Uh, well, sticky's good, but not dry. So I'm going to, I have laid down a towel, just an older towel to protect my work surface. And so I don't have to be so careful, you know, going to the edges. Um, and I'm not worried about this getting too wet and sort of, um, you know, warping this book board. Um, I haven't had trouble with that before, so I think it's gonna be okay. Since we're on this end, let's go ahead and put down this, because this is gonna take up a lot of this side. Okay. See how that looks? Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna press it down. You know, it's a little damp um, on the paper right now, but um, it's going to dry. So I'm gonna get that into that crevice, and push that down into the seam. And then what I like to do is kind of go back and forth and make sure that there's room for it to do, you know, what it kind of needs to do. To, uh, to fold and to bend. Okay. All right. Before we get to the other side, I'm going to go ahead and do my ripping of this because obviously I want to be ready to go when the glue is down. Okay, I think that this is enough tearing because as you can see, a lot of this edge is covered up. Um, we're gonna get this over just even a little bit more. So, um, so the part that is gonna be showing will be this torn edge. So 
So we've got some glue down. Now this is very wrinkled. Um, I <laughs> really wasn't expecting that. Maybe I got too much glue on it. This is also quite thin paper. Again, most of this is gonna be covered, so I'm not really concerned. I also think that it is going to, as it dries, um, that it is going to flatten out quite a bit. So, hopefully. So I'm just kind of pushing this down with the bone folder. Yeah, this side isn't getting quite as wrinkly. I, I expect that I got maybe a little too much glue maybe on the other side, but it is going to dry and I am trusting that that is gonna go away. Okay, so to put this down, I am gonna to need to put some glue on the back of this because obviously um, it's not gonna be covering, um, you know, the whole area behind it is not gonna be glued. So let me put this down on something and um, we will get it glued up. Okay, so I've got the back glued and of course it wants to curl, that's completely natural, that's what it's going to wanna to do. So, I'm gonna lay this down a little. I don't wanna push it down all the way yet because I need to see where that bird is going to fall. I wanna make sure. Yeah, I think it can actually come over a little. Oh, I can't do this too many times. <laughs> it's not gonna let me do it too many times. Um, right about there. My angle's a little off, hold on. Okay, yes, this looks good. Okay, just press that down. Now I didn't, I thought about doing some inking on this um, to give it more of an antique look, but as we're gonna go over it with the clear gesso, I'm afraid that that would run. So I decided against that and um, you know, it's still it's still gonna be it's gonna be so covered with other stuff that um, you probably wouldn't have noticed it anyway. So as I did before, I want to like press this into this crevice. So now I'm gonna cover the back of this bird with some of the glue and get him down. I'm just gonna keep going with this tacky glue. I am trusting, I'm having faith that this is all going to work um, because like I said, I've used it before and I don't recall having issues with it. Um, so I'm hoping for the best. And he fits perfectly into his little spot here. How fun is he? He already adds some three-dimensionality to this layout and um, you know after the fact I may go around him with a marker a brush marker and make really make that pop a little bit more even I'm just pushing this down get out as many of those bubbles as I can this is a little thicker paper so I may not have issues with it that looks so cool already I really like it okay so the next step is to put glue on the back of this and get it glued down Okay, so I wanna get this over as far to the right as I can. And I want it overlapping onto our yellow tulip page. So again, I'm just kind of smooshing down with my finger. And remember, there's gonna be the clear gesso going over this. So, um, you know, I'm not worried about, like I feel like I got a little glue here, but um, it's basically gonna be covered with more glue, so um, not at all worried about that. And then um, I think what I'm gonna have to do after I get Our Lady on, Louisa, I think I'm gonna have to let this dry before I put on the clear gesso. Um, I don't think I can safely put the gesso on while this is still kind of damp. Okay, I've got her glued and she's gonna go right here. And I'm just gonna put her as far to the edge as I can because of her hand. Um, I didn't I didn't wanna cut off her hand, so it's gonna be in here. I mean, I love the way this looks already. 
just imagine when we get the rest of the, um, you know, the, the, ingre the ingredients <laughs> in here. It's gonna be, it'll be a beautiful recipe. Okay, so this is where we are right now. Um, everything's glued down. I am gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna cover it. Um, we're gonna cover it with the clear gesso and then we'll have to let it dry again and uh, we'll be back as soon as this is dry. Okay, you guys, this is good and dry. And as I hoped, most of these wrinkles did come out. Now, the only things that are showing is where I got impatient <laughs> and like tried to like rub them down with my fingers. So other than that, it would have been fine. And on this side, there isn't really any. So, but it's all good because we're gonna be putting paint over this and now we're gonna be putting that coat of gesso over it as well. Okay, so we've got our gesso and it will dry clear. So I'm just putting a little bit on a clean paper plate. And let's get something back here again to protect the other side, like so. And I'm just gonna brush this on. And um, yeah, I'm excited to do this because um, I haven't used this yet. So I'm excited to see how this all turns out. Okay, the gesso is on and we're gonna let this dry now, let it get nice and dry and then we will begin painting. Okay, you guys, our gesso, our clear gesso is dried and clear. Look at that, it looks gorgeous. It looks absolutely beautiful, um, nice and dry. It took about, I let it dry naturally for about half an hour. There were still a few spots that were a little damp, so I took the hair dryer to it and um, got it nice and super dry. And so now we're gonna start painting. So um, I'm not gonna obviously um, do this in real time with you because it'll just take too long, but we're gonna get started on things and then uh, we'll you know, do the fast forward thing and uh, move it along there. But, so I've been thinking about what I wanna do here. I mean, there's still a lot of like empty space that I wanna do things to. And then I was thinking I need some blue because I do wanna bring in some lavender, like lavender flowers, which I think I might do in this area. I'm not exactly sure yet. So I'm thinking of maybe like, um, this is actually a picture, uh, it's my inspiration picture for a painting that I'm doing. But uh, blue hydrangea, it's just gonna be like a hint of hydrangea coming off the side if if you know what I mean and then I think over in here maybe we'll do uh, the lavender with maybe some daisies sprinkled in and then we'll do our tree limb over here also in the break I went ahead and trimmed off any little bits that were hanging over and this little corner was a little bit loose so I glued that back down. let's start with um, with a hydrangea so we're gonna need quite a bit of let's see here white in here and I'm gonna put just a little bit of green because there's just a little bit of green. Oh, I think I got too much, okay. Okay, more purple. <laughs> and we're gonna do a nice glob of white. So, yeah, oh, we're getting close, we're getting close. I think we need more, there's a lot of green in there. I think we need more purple. Now, is that the blue or the purple? See, that's what's hard to tell. That's blue, okay, we need more purple. And this one I'm actually gonna leave as a darker background color because then we're gonna come in over it. Let's do a little black in there, just a little. And um, we're gonna go over it with the lighter colors, if that makes sense. How about just a little dab of brown too? Okay. So what we're trying to pick up is like the deeper colors in here. More purple, we need more purple. Yeah, because periwinkle, this is kind of a periwinkle blue, it has a lot of uh, purple in it, right? Okay, so this is gonna be sort of our background color. And you know what, we can make our hydrangeas whatever color we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start over here in this corner, and I did bring it in a little bit closer. So we're gonna get like, kind of like the overall shape of the hydrangea, right? 
Um, this is not the detail portion of the show. <laughs> we're just gonna get, we're gonna like block in some, you know, shapes and like swirlies because um, we're gonna have a couple more layers on this. So I have kind of a couple of, they just look like blobs at this point. Now I'm gonna bring in more lavender and more white, and we're gonna do sort of a, um, a medium tone of this blue. So I'm kind of mixing this up. going to come in with this sort of medium tone and um, more, more swirlies. Do you see how that's popping against the dark? So I'm also trying not to make them too perfectly round because, you know, nothing in nature is exact. So we just wanna bring some little oddball petals out here. Okay, I think that's good for the second color. Now we're gonna come in even lighter. So we're gonna add in a little more of the green again and quite a bit more white. Get that mixed up, oh yeah, isn't that pretty? That is so very pretty, okay. Now I should have saved some of that medium blue because what we're gonna start doing is kind of um, some of the um, petals, kind of faking in some of those petals. And I think I'm gonna have to get a little bit smaller brush here, but we're gonna mix it with this one. And that is a really good, if you can kind of see in my, my faux wreath background color here, <laughs> that color right here. So that is very similar to that. Okay, brush that off. I'm gonna rinse this out and get a smaller brush. Okay, so I've got this brush. This is a great brush for doing flower petals. The other ones are a little too pointy and we don't have pointy petals. So um, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna just start um, just throwing in some, uh, some petals here. You don't even really have to try to make the shapes. The brush does the work for you, you know, and it doesn't have to be, you know, every petal doesn't have to be exactly right. So like in the hydrangeas, as you can see, it's almost like, um, there's like four, it's like four petals there, almost like a four leaf clover kind of thing. But not always is every petal going to show. Okay, so I think we have a fair amount of this color. I'm gonna call it kind of a slaty kind of, I don't know, it's almost like a little aqua tone, isn't it? Um, so we're, now we're gonna come in with um, a lighter color again. And I also wanna create something to show that this flower is different from this one. Some kind of a little um, demarcation of some sort. Um, so we're gonna mix in more white. But now I want to add in more blue again. Um, if I was doing like a regular big painting, there would probably be about 10 layers <laughs> of paint, uh, different layers to get that depth, um, which is so fun because every layer adds so much. Just a little more white here. Okay. 
more of the same little petals. Now do you see how those pop? Maybe I should have a painting channel. Hmm, I don't know. The Happy Painter, maybe, I don't know. Okay, I think we have enough of that color. Um, I think I'm gonna have to let that little light, lighter blue dry a little bit. I'm gonna go over it with one, I'm gonna say one last really light blue. Um, let's kind of cut in a couple of leaves here. I think this would be a good brush for that. Um, some green, some dark green. Maybe we'll add a little, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't see my palette. Um, there's not enough room on the screen. Um, I'm putting a little black. Here's my palette, by the way. So you see, and this is old paint. Um, so I've got the blue, or is that the purple? The the blue and the purple, and then this is where I've been mixing, and I've got the green, uh, the green, and then uh, this is Payne's Gray White, and then this is um, uh, a yellow, but it is a, a thick body acrylic, as is the white, because they just stand out a little bit better. Sometimes with acrylics, um, they just, they kind of melt away almost. It's kind of odd. Um, so now I'm mixing up a nice dark green for some petals. Or, uh, I'm sorry, for some leaves. I'm just gonna like squiggle in some little leaf shapes. Just here and there, just to show that this is indeed, these are indeed um, hydrangeas. Now hydrangeas actually have kind of a spiky looking kind of leaf. Um, I'm not too worried about the uh, realism right now. Oh, I like that. I like that it's not colored in solidly and it has a little texture. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Let's just color in this little corner, like just kind of fudge in some green. Pretend that this is all greenery down here. Oh, I like that. Kind of grounds it too. So I'm just kind of getting in a little bit of this green down here because you know, in the background it would be. Okay, and then we're gonna fill in more of this one. Maybe we've got one coming out, just a tip of it over here. Just a little tip. Okay, all right. So that's how it's looking so far. And I'm gonna come in with, um, again, the lighter tone of the blue, the lightest, and I think at that point, we're gonna be pretty close to done with the hydrangeas. They're probably the most complicated flower that I'm doing today. I'm mixing more white in with the blue, like a lot of white. Um, oh good, it picked up a little of that purple. And maybe a, a tad of the green, just a little. I don't wanna to get too much, just a little. Because it it's almost, um, they almost have like a little green tint to them. Oh, I love this. This is a fun color. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with this really pretty, it almost has a greenish tint to it. And like I said, I think this will be our last. Now I'm gonna try to create that separation from the other hydrangea with this. Uh, and I may have to come in darker back behind. Uh, I mean, they are kind of blending together, but We'll see what we can do. And then we want a few like kind of going off the page because you know, they're not necessarily gonna stick in the page. So 
So on this back one, I think what I'm gonna do is less of this color because I am saying that this hydrangea is in front of this one. So we're gonna see a few of these lighter petals, but mostly it's gonna be darker. And then, now I can, it's hard for me to see up close, but I, when I look up to the screen, I can see that this one is sticking out in front of it, which was, that's what I wanted. And then up here where, you know, the sun might hit it, there might be a few more lighter petals. Okay, I, I really like that. Um, I think I might, um, I think I'm gonna leave it at this point. I'm gonna put a little bit of lighter green on those uh, leaves, and then we're gonna move on, and I might come back in and, and uh oh, and fuss with this um, in a few minutes here um, after it gets a little more dry. So let's do like a really kind of lighter green, um, just to kind of highlight these petals a little, uh, I'm sorry, the, the leaves. Trying to decide which shade. Oh, I like that. I think I like that. But I will have to come in with a little bit smaller brush again. I'm just gonna give these leaves a little bit of highlighting and maybe, you know, so that they stand out a little bit because they're just kind of really dark. We just want a little texture here. some of the dark back. Okay, I think it's really pretty. Um, I will probably come back in and do a little highlighting and stuff like that and just uh, create a little bit more definition. But I don't know, it looks like blue hydrangeas to me. So how about we do some lavender in here. So I'm gonna come in with a skinny brush Pretty, pretty skinny brush, and um, do some like stems. That's pretty. That's a pretty good one too. I think this is better. Okay, so I'm gonna just do some random green stems. So I added in a little bit of brown to the green because the paints. Um, the paint's gray, which is like a black. It does make things, um, you know, grayish. And uh, I didn't want my leaves to be too, or my pet, my stems rather, to be too gray. So I'm just kind of wisping in a few stems here and there. Maybe we can even come in over here and do a few. Okay, so while I let that green, those um, stems, while I let that dry a little bit, I think I'm gonna come in and do our uh, fake branch. And I think, I don't know, we're gonna look at this Payne's Gray. Because this is black and white, so, um, you know, I'm not gonna do, obviously, a brown branch, um, but I am going to do green leaves. So <laughs> let's see, let's see what we can uh, come up with here. So I'm going to kind of follow this line. So it looks like, yeah, just sort of like that. And kind of color this in. So pretend like we've got some little branches here. Now to make this blend in even better, I really like the way that looks by the way. Um, I'm gonna kinda go, I'm gonna add this to some of the other parts of the tree so that it looks like it belongs. It's 
make this one longer. And one last one for good measure. Okay, two. Okay, so when that's dry, we'll just do, we'll just uh, punch in some little leaves. Let's kind of go around, since we've got the brush handy, let's kind of go around him. See, that is helping him to kind of pop out from the page. And not get lost in this um, graphic on this page. Oh, I'm really, really liking the way this is turning out. Okay, that that is really cool. Okay, I might do something similar on this side, except in the green, well, should I do the black or the green? Okay, I gotta think about that. Now I know what you're thinking. You think those don't look like much. I agree, they don't look like much. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna start punching in some little, I gotta find the right brush, um, some little shapes of, you know, like lavender buds. Um, I, I'm not sure this is the right brush, and I'm gonna find that, and then I'm gonna come on back and we're gonna get started. So I'm um, just getting a little bit of water on my brush, going in with just straight purple out of the tube, and this is gonna be like our background, I shouldn't have gotten that so wet, um, for the lavender buds, because you know, there are many different um, shades in lavender. So this is, you know, similar to the hydrangea, we're gonna have uh, a few layers here. just kind of punching in a little bit of these um, little darker buds down below where I didn't even do stems um, just because I don't want it to look like you know there's just a few stems coming out of the bottom of the page and that you know they don't really belong to anything so I'm just putting a little weight on the bottom of the page Okay, I think we have a good start for the background or the, um, you know, the first layer of the lavender flowers. So I'm gonna add a little white to the purple and get in um, that second layer and uh, just a little bit lighter. And I kind of fattened them up a little bit because I was just getting a little too small and I got a lot of area to cover, so we don't, we don't want them to be too small. So, um, okay. I think that's a pretty, well, maybe just a tad bit more white. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna come in and just kind of continue dabbing and um, just kind of add to that. Let me see if I can hold this up here a little closer to you. I'm just kind of doing little little blobs so I think I can do that and hold it every time I try to move the camera it, it uh, <laughs> it's a whole deal <laughs> you know to reset it so see how that's just giving a little depth oh I am really liking the way this is coming out oh it's getting my my juice is flowing for um, painting again like I haven't painted for a while. I was going to start again because um, I you know, went down to one day a week, one uh, video a week, and then I got a call to do some contract work um, from, from my old job and I'm you know, happy to do it. But you know, now there's only so many hours in the day. So, um, so anyway, I haven't really done it, but this is kind of fulfilling that little need. There we go. Okay, so now we've got a second layer on. Let's come back in with one even lighter layer. 
and then you see that there are a few stems there. I mean, I know they're kind of fat, but um, there are a few that um, don't have anything. I'm gonna do a little daisy. I'm gonna do like three daisies. Now that's my goal anyway. Okay, even a little bit more white in there and maybe a hint of green. Okay, so this is very, very pale. It's got a little touch of green in it. Sorry guys, I gotta lay down for this one. <laughs> but I'll bring it up and show you when I'm done. I think I have a pretty good coat on the lavender flowers. I am gonna come in with just like white at the very end and give a few highlights. Let's throw some leaves on our uh, branch branch over here. Let's see, I'm trying not to lay in, <laughs> in my lavenders here. You know what? I'm gonna turn it upside down. Who says you gotta paint right side up? I'm not getting too worried about how realistic they are looking um, because obviously this is uh, uh, more impressionistic than realistic, um, but I'm just giving the, um, you know, the idea that this is a tree going overhead with some leaves. So, continue on. So now I'm gonna go in with um, a little bit of the green with, with the uh, paints gray to make it a little darker just to give a little more depth in here I'm just gonna kind of you know just add a little bit of squiggle to it Okay, I really like the way that looks. That is really cute. Okay, I think I might actually do that over here, what I was talking about. Um, I'm debating if I should throw in a little blue sky. Um, I'm thinking I'm just gonna kind of do what I did over here, even though I don't have the tree. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm going in. <laughs> With some branches and uh, we're just gonna pretend that we've got another tree over here coming out over here and we're not gonna have as many branches maybe but we're just gonna kind of carry that little design through Kind of pretending that the tree is here I'm kind of um, you know oh that actually looks pretty good I'm kind of faking in a tree over here and then um, like I said this will be a branch coming out from it and we'll put some nice uh, leaves on it as well Now because there's gray in this tree, I'm going to kind of fudge in a little of that gray 
over here instead of, you know, so you can't just see the, um, the music paper <laughs> behind because you can't over here. Now bringing in a little white, kind of tile that together. It's not gonna look exactly like that, but it's gonna give us the idea that there is a tree on each side of this. And then I'm gonna come in and, as I sort of outlined the real tree over there, kind of do the same over here so that it looks similar. Okay, so let's add a little bit of white on these flowers. Since this is dry, I just wanna add a little bit of, um, I'm just gonna go in with straight white, just do some kind of highlighting. Especially like, you know, the outside flowers where you know that, oops, sorry, <laughs> that it's gonna be hit by the sun. So I'm not gonna do these back, right back behind because um, they're gonna, they're kind of hidden, right? Just like little, little squiggles of white. And then back here, we think that that might be getting hit by the sun. Plus it just adds a little, um, you know, definition and, um, Again, a little bit more depth. Maybe just a little bit on the leaf. I need to add in some more blue here. I got a little carried away. That can happen. gesso. The paint is going beautifully over it. It's just beautiful. Do some leaves on this uh, branch over here and then we're gonna do the daisies and I think we're pretty much done unless I change my mind oh yeah I really like that I really like that We do just a little bit of white on the leaves on the tree on our freak <laughs> on our fake limbs here just a little bit of highlighting with white I'm using a really small brush and then I'm also kind of going, getting a little bit of a, a highlight on the branches, which isn't really a highlight as much as getting in some of that white 
you know, because the branches wouldn't be completely black, right? They would have a little bit of uh, other colors in them. I hope you can see the sun is now coming in and uh, my might, might be actually be too bright but I've just added um, highlighting to the branches and the leaves and boy that really added a lot I am loving this just a couple of daisies I think maybe three down here and I think we're done okay we're gonna be using this brush and boy my paint is I got all kinds of other colors mixed in with my white we're gonna go in pretty much bright white with the petals. And again, we're gonna to try to let the brush do as much of the work as possible. And we'll add the, um, um, the center in after the fact. Just gonna, I'm just kind of filling in some of these empty spots here. I know it's probably hard to see. I'll bring it up closer in a minute. I love doing daisies. I have um, a painting in my Etsy shop. It's called Thursday's Daisies, and I had the most fun with those daisies. <laughs> Since, I don't know if we can have four. We might have to have five. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe he's kind of going sideways. And how about one more over in here? Again, maybe kind of going sideways. Put in our yellow centers. Oh, this is turning out so well. I love it. This is the most painting I've done in an art journal layout yet. Um, and and I'm, I'm hooked, I like it. So I'm just taking uh, pure yellow, yellow medium, thick body acrylic, and I'm just dabbing it in. That is cute. That is so cute. For the sideways one, of course, we don't want it to be completely round because he's going sideways. And here we'll have, we'll give him a nice big, nice big middle here. Now, isn't this a pretty garden to be hanging out in? I think it is. She looks pretty happy to me. Okay, oh my gosh, I just love those. <laughs> Look at those daisies, are they cute? Um, I'm going to uh, just cut in a couple of little leaves on those daisy stems. Um, they gotta have a couple leaves, right? I'm 
pull some of this green up so that this, and kind of go over this stem. This I know it's a really thick stem, <laughs> but that's okay. We're, we're impressionistic. I'm just kind of going around and dabbing a little bit of green in here and there, just to, you know, because there would be some. Let's cut down on the thickness of this stem a little bit with some white. So I kind of trimmed down the, uh, <laughs> the thickness of these, these fat stems here just a little bit. I'm also dabbing in just a little bit of green the daisies they have a little green in them okay so there's actually one last step and that is where I'd like to go around the uh, drawings with um, a gray paint marker to give a give them a little bit of um, contrast so as you can see I've got a gray paint marker and these are just water-based markers and I'm just kind of outlining um, so that it kind of stands out. Do you see the difference that that made helping it to kind of stand out? Um, and that just gives it a little more uh, dimension. So I'm gonna kind of go around with this. I'm a marker gal, I like markers. Also going around Louisa, Louisa, um, even like over the flowers, so that you can see that there is a shadow um, under her as well. Now I already went around the bird with the paint, if you remember, because I wanted to tie this in, but I'm also going to go around it with um, the paint marker. As well. Okay you guys it's done. So I went around the uh, images with the gray paint marker and um, I went ahead and did a little bit more highlighting and I forgot that I had put a branch or two over here so I went ahead and did some little uh, lavender flowers and a daisy um, and uh, I just love the way this turned out. I, I'm so pleased with it for my last entry in this art journal. I'm so happy, and I hope you enjoyed watching. I so enjoyed having you. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. As always, I appreciate you so much, and we will see you next time. Bye.